The Order system is the heart of the rifle and spade games. That is for Gallipoli 1915, Churchill's Greatest Gamble, and Mons 1914, The Mad Minute. I wanted the armies in these games to react the way that they did historically, so that the games would flow like the real battles. The armies involved developed the tactics and operational methods that they used because communication was slow and unreliable. A good plan had to account for that. They didn't have radios and they weren't telepathic robots. Overreach was dangerous, reserves were critical. The hard part is how to make the order system easy to use, unambiguous and realistic. Gallipoli and Mons are both grand tactical games. They show whole battles with the units extending from battalion and battery level right up to corps. Orders are issued to brigades in British armies, to regiments in all other armies, Germans, Ottoman, French and later Americans. In World War I, orders were issued in terms of terrain. Take that hill, defend these woods, pull back and regroup in this gully. Frontages were defined by the organisation of the armies. You couldn't spread them out thinly because you didn't have radios. In a mobile battle, and rifle and spade games are for the opening mobile battles of World War I, orders were passed by runners and by the occasional telephone line. So the units in a brigade or regiment had to stay in close contact. As the battle wore on, key officers would become casualties and runners would be picked off by snipers. Changing orders became more difficult and you could be caught out of position if the other side had kept reserves. In Rifle and Spade, every British brigade or other nation's regiment has exactly one order at all times. By the way, I became very tired of writing British Brigade or other nation's regiment, so the rules use a contraction, bridgement. To say it again, every bridgement has exactly one order at all times. The order is displayed here on the Army's status display. This is the Gallipoli chart. In Mons, these tables at the bottom have been moved into the General Charts and Tables booklet. The display has a handy summary of the capability and restrictions of each order. For example, here we have the 1st Australian Brigade in under an attack order. And what it says here is that every turn, one line unit must either move at full speed towards an objective, trigger opportunity fire, or attempt an assault. In other words, you've been ordered to attack and you have to do something dangerous. That's the infamous make progress requirement. There are times when you'd like to stop attacking, but you fail to change your orders and you have to continue. These are all the orders types, basically attack, defense, disorganized defense, regroup, general reserve, and march. There are some special ones, initial attack and cordon defense that uh, only show up at the beginning of certain scenarios. Across the top of the Army status display is the officer point track. Every bridgement has a current total of officer points and also has an order. We use these two chits to mark that. A loss of officer points represents a loss of the key low-level leaders, runners and general disorganisation fatigue that specifically affect the ability to change or continue an order. For example, every step loss causes a loss of two officer points. Every assault or rally next to the enemy or landing from a boat causes one officer point lost due to a disorganisation. Officer points can be slowly regained on defence orders back up to half of your original level, but the only sure way is to pull out of line and use the regroup order. The regroup order allows you to recover all your officer points. So what effect do officer points have? Every turn, each bridgement must roll to see if it can continue its orders. So let's go through some examples using a typical late afternoon at Anzac Cove. I've removed the hiding markers so that you can see the brigades. The Anzacs are ashore and the Ottomans have counter-attacked furiously. The front of Australian brigades are now exhausted and intermingled. They failed their attack orders and now are on disorganised defence. On disorganised defence, all they can do is either stay where they are or those who aren't in contact can fall back to the HQ. They don't want to lose their foothold and they don't want to become any more disorganised than they are, so they're going to stay where they are now. In the back, we have the New Zealand and Australian Division. The New Zealand Brigade has general reserve orders, I can do something with them, but at the moment the 4th Australian has orders to go straight up the middle into the teeth of the Ottoman defence. 
This is now clearly suicide, so I'd like to do something else with them. In particular, what I plan to do is to try to relieve the 1st and 3rd Australian Brigades here with the 4th Australian. So I'll be trying to change the 4th Australian to defence and then 1st and 3rd Australian to regroup, pull them back to the beach and regrain their officer points. Here is the Army status display. The 1st, 2nd and 3rd Australian Brigades all have very few officer points left and they're all on disorganised defence. The New Zealand Brigade, 4th Australian, have all of their officer points. There's the New Zealand Brigade on General Reserve and the 4th Australian on attack. Here's my planning map. You can see that I've used coloured pens to match the colours of the brigades. It's very useful when you're drawing. So we have 2nd Australian on the right here, 1st Australian plus 3rd Australian intermingled here on the ridge and 4th Australian on their attack straight up the middle. And you can see here on the map I've marked the objectives of the battalions 13, 14 and 15 and 16 in support. So first I'm going to try to send the New Zealand Brigade out on an attack on the open left flank. So let's see how we change the orders on the AST. So New Zealand Brigade, they're an ANZAC unit so they take the top one here and that black number 52 they have to roll equal to that or less in order to change orders. 52 is not bad. Then we come down here we look at the orders matrix and we see that because they're in general reserve and they're attempting to change to attack there's a minus 20 DRM. There's also the situational modifiers, none of those apply so I have to roll 52 minus 20 so we roll and the result is 22 so they pass. Therefore I take the planning map and draw the new order on there and move their counter down to attack. Now let's look at the 4th Australian. They also have 13 officer points so they need to roll a 52. They're currently on attack orders and they're trying to change the defence so that's a minus 10. Then situationally nothing applies, they're not intermingled so they need to roll a 52 with a minus 10 and we get 32 so they also change so we move the chit over to defense and change the map the last thing we need to do is pull the first and third Australian brigades out of the line and back to regroup. So here we have the green first Australian, we're looking down we need a 16 to change orders. They're on disorganised defence, if you look most of these are prohibited, the only things they in fact they can do is switch to an ordinary defence or to pull out of the line and regroup. We're trying to regroup so that's minus 30 DRM. But some of the situational supply it, they are intermingled in particular that's plus 20 and they have a stack of confused units so that's plus 25 adding to the minus 30 gives a net minus 5 so we roll 36 minus 5 is 31 that's not enough to beat a 16 so the third Australian sorry the first Australian are stuck in place there's no penalty for trying to change orders and failing Third Australian is very similar, they're, they're all the same things, it's a minus five. So let's roll and luckily we get a zero six. So they will pull out. So the third Australian can move from disorganised defence to regroup and I will mark the regroup position on the map. There you have it, an overview of the order system in Rifle and Spade. I used Gallipoli as an example, but the MON system is the same. To make more space on the ASDs, the charts that were at the bottom of the Gallipoli table have been moved in the Charts and Tables booklet. So here you have the matrix and the situational DRMs. Some of the situational DRMs are different because it was a different battle. Orders are the heart of rifle and spade. If you can keep reserves, pull broken bridgements out to regroup, and fake out there your opponent, then you will win. Mons 1914, The Mad Minute, 
is available for P500 pre-order from GMT Games.